In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite little cover two bombs against the gun or against the uh, out of the gun spread in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about how you can become the best Madden player you could possibly become. And so, if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date on the latest tips and strategies right here on the YouTube channel. Now, as we're talking about this today, I'm talking with you today about my Arizona Air Raid spread offense. And if you have not already checked out the Arizona Air Raid, uh, I believe it was one of the best offenses in the entire game. It has all of the tools that you need to be successful. It has all of the powerful routes that really can help you become um, an elite passer in this game. And the play we're gonna be talking about today uh, from that formation is actually gonna be talking about um, this play right here, wide cross. I think this is a very underrated pet play uh, in this formation. We're gonna be talking about why it's so effective and how you can master uh, running this. This is really good in light of a lot of different types of defense that you're gonna be facing. One of those being uh, a lot of cover two. This is a very, very good cover two beater. And again, if you want to get my full air raid offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. I'm pretty sure it's on sale right now for 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks, but it's relatively affordable and it's been one of my favorite offenses all season long. So anyways, let's talk about White Cross and why it's so good. So first and foremost, um, ideally you want to run this um, with the you want the running back on the short side of the field when you run this, ideally, okay? It's not always gonna happen, but in a perfect world, that's how you would have it. Now, uh, I first wanna show this against Tampa 2, and this, this wide cross, if you take a look here on this left side, you notice that it comes with this nice little stock fade route um, that kind of fades to, it's like a streak, but it, it fades to the sideline. Um, that, is, that is a little bit different than a hot routed fade route. So if you look here, I'm gonna put a triangle on a hot routed fade route. And you're gonna see that that's the fade route. It's one step to the outside and then just basically a streak. But what I like about this uh, stock fade route that Adams is on with the square receiver is it is drifting gradually to the sideline, which allows you to pass lead this away from the deep half defender. So let me show you what I'm talking about right here. So if you see cover two, once he gets past the, the guy, uh, once he gets past the flat zone in a cover two, um, you're gonna be able to easily do this. Most people, when they run cover two, they're gonna be setting their zone drops. And if they set their zone drops, what that's gonna mean is there's not gonna be a jam on this left side. And so as you'll see right here, you're gonna have a lot of an opportunity to be able to throw this. Now, if you're having any issue, uh, one of the only adjustment that I typically make to this play is I will typically smart route the triangle receiver um, you don't have to, but I will typically do that. And I will take the running back or the R1 receiver and wheel him. Okay, that's really the, the two things that I will do. Now, you'll notice here that, again, you wanna really get it out there. You, you, wanna, you want to really throw this to the sideline. You don't want this to, you, you don't want this to have an opportunity to come back to the middle of the field. Ideally, they press coverage. Uh, most people at this point in the year will be pressing their coverage out of a Tampa 2. And what's really nice about this, again, is you're just passing this to the sideline. It doesn't matter if they're 25 or 30 yard flats, they're not gonna be able to get back on that ball, okay? And so that's kind of the first step. The second step is what do you do whenever they you know, adjust to that? So one example of an adjustment is something like this right here, where I've got, you know, I've got a cover four call. So I've got two safeties going back on that fade route, but now what I've got is I've got this really nice little out route. This is why I personally prefer to smart route this um, because what's gonna happen is it's very likely that you're gonna see something like this defense right here, right? This is Mike Blitz 3. The beauty of the smart route um, is that it's gonna go 10 yards. Most people put their zone drops on five yards, and so that 10 yard out route is gonna get wide open. Of course, one of the things you wanna make sure that you do uh, on this is you want to either high point pass it um, or something you want to be basically what you want to do um, is work hard to get this over the zones okay that's that's really the biggest thing that I can tell you you want to get this over the zones you don't want to do what I just did so if you're in a situation like that just high point it and, and oftentimes you can be oftentimes high point passing is super underrated this year because it really does do a good job of like glitching out the coverage. Uh, let me show you that one more time. So I'm just gonna go to like a standard cover three. And again, I'm gonna smart route that triangle receiver. 
And if you see they fall back onto that deep route, it's similar to the play Flood. But as you can see right there, it's a nice little easy read for me to be able to take. Now, let's talk about man-to-man -man coverage just briefly here for just a moment. Um, it is very likely that you're going to see some kind of man-to-man -man coverage um, if you're playing this, uh, if you're playing in the air raid or in the spread. And so this, this out route is, is very, again, it's very similar to the flood concept from Bunch, except it's basically that from spread. And it's honestly, in my personal opinion, a little bit better because normally if they're in man coverage, and I would probably honestly tell you that I would put a good route runner there for sure. I don't know if it'd be my best route runner, but I definitely have a good route runner there. But if they're in man coverage on that cut to the left, he almost always will win. He'll almost always beat man to the left side. That's why it's such a good route. Uh, and again, the beauty of the spread offense is that it spaces the field horizontally um, really, really, really well. Okay, so now let's talk about maybe something like a Mike Blitz 3 kind of Mabel coverage. Um, and, and, and again, obviously we're, we're reading this from left to right. Um, and so what's going to happen after that is we're going to shift our eyes. Okay, we see that. Oh, that's not open. Now we come back to this little crossing route. Now that crossing route will typically... Um, will typically pull the user. Normally the user is gonna wanna guard the crossing route. If he doesn't, throw it. If he doesn't guard the crosser, throw it. Normally, traditionally, when I run this play, um, the user will typically guard the crosser. But what you wanna do is you wanna wait on this circle receiver. Um, but as you can see, if they, if they go with the crossing route, and this is why this play is so daggone good. If they go with the crossing route, then what's gonna happen is, this uh, this little butt, this little like post curl route um, is going to be wide open. So again, you're reading this left to right. Okay, 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 and bam. Um, that read right there is super consistent. Now, really quick, just a little tip on this. Whenever you want to throw this route, um, it's really good because the yellows, uh, not very many yellow zones are going to defend it, especially if people are doing zone drops where they're putting their yellows on like five yards. But when you, you really want to wait to throw it because the zones will basically just fall away from it. And then when you throw it, just inside pass, lead it, click on, and catch it. Okay? Let me show this uh, to you against man coverage. It's not as good against man coverage unless you have, like, a really good receiver. But if you throw it right on the cut, you're going to see you have pretty good success. The other reason I really like this play against man-to-man -man coverage specifically is if they're running a coverage that's something resemblant of what I see right here, where we put the purple zones out there, this stock fade will pretty much always be a automatic one play touchdown. Because again, these stock fades are super glitchy, especially against like anything that, you know, if they shade over top, that's one thing. But if they don't shade over top, then you're gonna dot them over the top. And it's very easy, simple little route. So that's what's cool about this. This is a very nice play. It really does flow well. Um, that's one of the things I really like about this play is it flows really, really well together. That wheel route to the running back is really more of a, a, a route that's designed to pull the zone coverage. But you know what? If it's open, throw it, right? If it's open, throw it. Again, this is going to get them out of Tampa 2. If they're running a lot of Tampa 2, they're not going to continue to run it after you do that a couple times. That dot right there is super smooth and super, super simple. The other thing that this is going to force them to do in their Mabel coverage is they're not going to be able to play a traditional Mabel coverage. So it's likely that they're going to have to either back off their flat zones or they're going to have to increase their curls uh, or their curl flat zones. And so the reason that that matters is because what's going to continue to happen, as you're going to notice as a theme with the spread, is it's going to continue to stretch and expand. Okay, and the concepts are going to continue to become more and more open as you move through this process. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to get my entire air raid spread offensive guide, you can get that in the description right now. I believe it's 15 to 20 bucks. It's probably somewhere in there. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper. I can't remember exactly the price on it, but I know it's probably below $20 at this point. But thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you want to learn my entire air raid offensive guide, you can do that in the description of this video. Thanks for your time. And we'll see you guys on stream tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time.